Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com. Um, today I have something interesting, something expensive, something huge. Uh, today I have the Canon 28 to 70 RF F2 lens. Zoom lens is what I wanted to say. Now this lens is crazy huge. It's fat, it's wide, it's got girth. It is massive. Now that is a bad thing and a good thing. Um, let me talk to you guys a little bit about this lens. First of all, it has that control ring which is customizable, which is super cool. I love the Canon RF lenses for that alone. Um, and then you have the build quality, which is just off the charts, insanely good. Everything about this lens is professional quality. You have a AF, MF button here. You have a lock button here to lock your zoom ring in, and it does extend when you zoom. So it gets even bigger. Now this is a professional lens, weather sealed, and for the RF system, I should say the R. EOS R camera system. The only problem with this lens is it's huge and it outclasses the current EOS R body. I own the EOS R. I'm filming with it right now using the 24 F14 Mark II lens, the EF lens, and it works great for me. Um, it's small, it's fast, it gives a wide enough angle so I can do videos like this. The 28 to 70, I've used it for the past week or so. Uh, and I shot some photos with it. I wrote up a review over at stevehuffphoto.com. If you want to see the written review and the images, you can click a link in the description below that goes to my website and that specific review. But I wanted to add a video here for you guys so I can kind of convey uh, my thoughts about this lens. I'll share a few images here as well with the 28 to 70, but it is basically a no compromise on image quality kind of lens. I feel Canon made this as their tour de force. Look what we can do, Nikon and Sony. Look what we can do. We can develop a lens that offers a no compromise image quality, and we can do so for $3,000 or $29.99, so they can say under $3,000. Now, this lens here, the Canon 28 70 F2, is brilliant. Um, it's up there with the best lenses I have tested. Lenses like the Zeiss Otis 55-14. This lens renders an awful lot like that Zeiss Otis. And the Otis is huge and manual focus only and comes in for more money than the Canon. Then you have lenses like the Leica SL 50-14, which is about the same size, maybe not as girthy. And it has the same IQ, but it comes in at around $5,400 or so, more money than the Canon. Uh, the Leica 50 APO is tiny mini, but it's $8,000, manual focus only, and renders a lot like every focal length within the 28 to 70 range of the Canon. See, the Canon is like having a prime lens at every focal length between 28 and 70. It has stunning performance wide open at f2 no matter what focal length you are using 28 29 30 31 32 it's like having a 28 a 35 a 50 and a 70 millimeter prime lens f2 of pro optical quality so the price tag of three thousand dollars is not really expensive when you look at what you're getting for photographers, for wedding pros, for portrait pros who use the EOSR or plan to maybe go to the EOSR when Canon finally releases a pro version of the body, which is what they need for this lens because as I said earlier, this lens outclasses the current EOSR. I see the EOSR, again, I'm filming with it right now, as a prosumer kind of body. It's not professional and it's not beginner. Um, I love the EOSR, I use it for video most of the time, but when I do take it out for photos, it doesn't fail. And what drew me to it were these amazing RF lenses. The 51 II, which I reviewed prior, is stunning. Um, the 28 to 70 is stunning. The 24 to 105 kit lens is really, really good, and they have some cool lenses on the way. The only problem is these pro lenses are huge, and they need a body. I think, I think Canon needs an EOS R type of body, like an EOS R X, right? So you get that pro build a little bit bigger for these lenses. And once that comes out, I think we are going to see some amazing things because these lenses 
uh, are better than what I'm seeing from Nikon and Sony at the moment. Uh, these just have that special rendering, the 2870 and the 5012. Beautiful, beautiful uh, statement. Look what we can do lenses from Canon. Um, now, the weaknesses of this lens, again, are the size and weight. It's pretty hefty, it's pretty girthy, um, and it feels a little odd on the EOS R, but I was fine shooting it. I shot with it for a couple days out and about, and I had no problems with it. Now, this is a lens that can take advantage of the nifty low light focusing ability of the EOS R, something like minus five or six EV, right? But I took this lens into a dark, um, location that I shoot other lenses at to test the low light abilities of a lens and a camera and the focus systems. The Canon 51.2 RF and EF on the EOS R were instant focusers, even in low light. It was like I pressed that button and I thought I had a defect because the camera was already focused. The 28 to 70 hunted a little bit in low light. Um, it was not as quick to focus for me as the 50 F1.2 probably because it's so huge and has a lot of glass to move. Um, so while it's really good with autofocus, in cavernous conditions, it's going to hunt a little bit. Now, anyone who uses this lens for video will be either using it for B-roll, where you don't need audio, or you will have a professional or microphone setup. In that scenario, it is beautiful. This can make for a gorgeous video lens. But if you just plop this on your EOS R and you use the built-in mic for a family video, you're going to have the same problem I have with most of these EF lenses. All right, so here's my mic. I use a Rode um, Video Mic Pro Plus. I'm gonna try to put this by the camera to see if it can pick up the grinding of my 2414, right? Now, if I unplug the mic from the camera using my 2414, You can hear that grinding, right? So I'm gonna plug this mic back in because I don't like that sound. All right, so the 28 to 70, unfortunately, also makes this noise. I'm gonna switch to the 28 to 70 right now and film with that. Let me pause this. All right, so now I'm filming with the 28 to 70. I'm looking at the LCD because it does have a flippy screen and I can see that I'm in focus, the autofocus is around my face, the face tracking is fantastic. Dual pixel AF works amazing. But I wanna show you that I'm gonna unplug the mic and you're gonna hear that crackling. Okay, now I'm using the built-in mic and not many people are going to do that. Let me plug back in the... Testing one, two. All right, so I'm back with the road. You're not gonna hear it. It's not gonna make a difference to 99% of the people. I just wanted to point out that this lens still does make noise when it focuses. It's not a silent focusing lens. But other than that, it is an image quality machine. It is a technological tour de force and it is something special in the way that it renders images. Great color, um, striking contrast sharp without looking analytical or jaggedy. It's just right. Bokeh, bokeh, however you want to say it, is buttery smooth. It is gorgeous. It reminds me of those lens I spoke of earlier. Zeiss Otis, right? The Leica SL 51.4, the Leica 50 Apo, an $8,000 manual focus lens. You're getting that image quality in the 28 to 70. And this lens I feel is more for a professional wedding pro or portrait pro. Um, and I think it's really going to find a home with many once Canon released a Prospect EOS R body. At $3,000, it's expensive, but it's well worth it for the quality that Canon is giving us here. If you can deal with the size and the price, you're not going to find a better lens. Again, now I'm filming with the 28 to 70 F2. Um, now my 2414 probably looks just as good because that's a stunning lens as well. But this is giving you a prime in every focal length between 28 and 70, an F2 Pro quality prime. So for $3,000, you cannot beat that. The build is fantastic. It's weathered sealed. It has that programmable front dial. I have mine programmed to exposure compensation. So I can, you know, when I'm shooting in a concert, for example, I can tone down the lights, bring up the lights, whatever I need to do. So I highly recommend this lens if you're using it for professional photography. If you want that buttery, smooth image quality, 
Canon hit it out of the park with this lens. It is beautiful. The Canon 28-70 F2 RF. I can't wait for a Prospect EOS R. Bring it on, Canon. I am ready.